Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you can be with us today. What we're talking about today is heartburn. How many people have heartburn, acid reflux, burping, gas, digestive issues? So many people have it. In fact, in my practice, in our practice, we have several doctors, in our practice, I, I think if we tested everyone, and I've done this already in groups, about 85% of the people we test have something wrong with the digestive system. So we're going to talk about acid reflux, what to do about it. That's the most important thing. Signs of it. You'll be amazed. And then we're going to go into heart issues. And the reason I'm putting these two together is that many times people have stomach pains and they think it's a heart attack. Sometimes people may have a heart attack and think it's stomach pains. Nose itches. Sorry about that. So I want you to be able to differentiate the two. And again, you're, you don't want to differential diagnose yourself. If you have an issue, you want to get it checked immediately. But I want to give you some options as to what may be going on. Okay? So what happens is you eat a meal. It go, your mouth uh, starts mixing the food with saliva. Now, saliva has something in it called salivary amylase. Saliva, salivary amylase breaks down carbohydrates. So the macronutrients, there's micro and macronutrients. Macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So you put a carbohydrate in your body, whatever it is, bread, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, apples, doesn't matter. The, the mouth releases salivary amylase, and the salivary amylase starts breaking down the carbohydrates. Then it goes down your esophagus, and at the bottom of the esophagus, there's a little hole. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter. And what happens is it opens, food drops into the stomach, the esophageal sphincter closes, your stomach mixes the food through a process called peristalsis. Peristalsis is the stomach kind of does these muscular contractions and kind of mixes all the food around with the acids once it's broken down enough, another valve opens and dumps it into the small intestine. That valve closes, stomach fills up again, and that's normal digestion. So what happens is that that lower esophageal sphincter can be faulty. It could be stretched out. It could be that the nerve going to that area is not working properly. And so now the food may, some feel like it's getting caught in your throat. Anybody have that? Well, sometimes it feels like you're gagging. That certainly could be an issue with the lower esophageal sphincter. Uh, if you have acid reflux, the sphincter may be stretched out and food is now coming back up into the throat. The problem with that is not necessarily the food coming back up into the throat. It's the stomach acid. When stomach acids come up into the throat, the throat cells are not designed to protect against stomach acid. The lining of the stomach is very, very strong. So if I were to cut your stomach open right now, which I'm not going to do, cut open your stomach and pour it on a carpet, let's say, it'll burn a hole in the carpet. That's how strong your stomach acids are. But if that sphincter closes, once that sphincter is closed, uh, the acid can't come up and the stomach maintain, contains the acid. Then the food passes into your small intestine. In the small intestine, your pancreas spits out basically baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. It spits out baking soda to neutralize the acid. So no acid above the stomach, no acid below the stomach. The baking soda spits out, neutralizes the stomach acid, and then it's able to go into your small intestine as more of an alkaline instead of an acid, and it doesn't eat away at your small intestine. If your pancreas isn't working properly and you're not producing enough bicarbonate or baking soda, you can get ulcers. The acid can burn a hole in your small intestine. It's called duodenal ulcer. And so if you have pain, it could be an ulcer, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so the, the, we have to just make sure the stomach is contained, that the food doesn't go in or out without it being processed. So if the food comes up through that lower esophageal sphincter, you might have a burning in your chest. You might have, my mother called it sour burps. Uh, you might have a chronic cough. <laughs> that acid is coming up into the throat. And you're trying to, constantly trying to clear your throat. Many people I found over the years have sinus problems. And the acid is going right up into their sinuses and you have a runny nose and the, you know, the doctor, the GI, uh, ear, nose and throat doctor looks in your sinuses and goes, looks fine to me. I don't know what to do about it. And it's really the acid coming up. And so we've had a lot of referrals from uh, ear, nose and throat doctors who listen to the show and say, I never thought about that before. Let me send these people out to Dr. Joe and let his team take a look at it. So if the stomach is up against the diaphragm, that valve, that ring of uh, muscles opens and lets the food up and it's supposed to close, and that's where the problems come in. So you may have a genetically faulty valve, which is possible, but pretty rare. Almost every case I've ever seen, and I've been doing this for 37 years, almost every case I've ever seen is the stomach is just pushing up through that lower esophageal sphincter, and that's allowing the acid to come through. So here comes logic. What would make sense? If your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm, what if we just massaged and pulled the stomach down away from the diaphragm? That's exactly the treatment 
that we do in most of these cases. And if we're able to pull the stomach down away from the uh, diaphragm, that hole, that lower esophageal sphincter can close, acid doesn't come back into the throat anymore, problem solved. People love us when we fix their stomach because the acid is annoying, but then you're not breaking down your food. Your stomach's main job is to take proteins, whether it comes from a carrot or a piece of celery, and proteins, if you look under a microscope, look like a ball of yarn. They unravel this ball of yarn, and then the acid chop up those proteins into something called amino acids. Then the amino acids go into the small intestine where they get absorbed. Now, why is this important? In fact, just this weekend, I attended a seminar on uh, neurophysiology, uh, brain function, brain injuries. And we have to, the brain produces something called neurotransmitters. Now, neurotransmitters, there's four major ones, make the brain work. Okay, so tryptophan uh, becomes serotonin. Serotonin makes you focus, makes you happy. Uh, a tyrosine becomes dopamine. Dopamine gives you pleasure. Glutamine becomes GABA and norepinephrine. Norepinephrine gives you energy. GABA suppresses pain. So if you don't have a good digestive system, if you have acid reflux or heartburn or burping, gas, bloating, your stomach may not be breaking the proteins into amino acids. The amino acids then can't be absorbed, combined with vitamins, and become neurotransmitters. Your brain can't work. So every case I've ever seen, and I've been doing this a long time, every case I've ever seen where there was an emotional issue, anxiety, depression, bipolar, suicidal even, uh, uh, that people are uh, uh, non-social, there's always a digestive component. Now, that's my experience. That's what I found in my years of practice. Maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't have that, but there's always a component, I should say, of the emotional issue is the digestive system. Now, you may have a brain tumor, you may have brain trauma, uh, that can cause problems as well, but every time I see brain trauma, I see a gut problem. And the one instructor I was with uh, this weekend, he said it too. He says, every time he sees a traumatic brain injury, you start to develop things like leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is when your gut is not, uh, the, the wall, the lining of the, the, the gut, the walls of the gut have little holes in it. And you can absorb undigested food, bacteria, fecal matter, and that can get into the blood system. So the brain and the gut work together. And in fact, when you were born, when the sperm and the egg came together, the first thing to form was the brain and the spinal cord. The same type of cells that form the brain form the gut. So it's like one big organ. We think of it as two different organs, but it's like one big, massive, giant organ. And so if one isn't working, the other one isn't working. So if you have acid reflux, it's not just a, hey, it's annoying. It's a, hey, I got to fix this. And if you're doing things like a medication to shut down your production of stomach acid, that can be very dangerous too. Because now you're not producing stomach acid, which you need to break down your proteins. And if you ever read the directions on those stomach acid medications, no one ever does. It says use between two and six weeks. And at the end of that, discontinue use. Doesn't say what to do when you discontinue it. It just says discontinue use. So you're like, okay, what am I going to do then? I have acid reflux. I take the medication. The acid reflux feels better. Six, two to six weeks later, I stop taking it. Acid reflux comes back. I don't know anyone in my long career that has ever followed the rules and taken it for two to six weeks. Everyone takes it forever. And the problem is you're shutting down your body's ability to absorb, break down proteins into amino acids, but also in many cases you can't absorb calcium, B12, iron, and magnesium because you need stomach acid for those things. And so when you're reducing stomach acid, that can be really, really, really dangerous and, in fact, could lead to real serious problems. Especially you're just not digesting your food. And so once that happens, you think, well, I have acid reflux. It hurts. i got to fix that. Well, fixing the symptoms is one thing. Fixing the cause is what I want to do with you. I want to find out why you have this acid reflux and can we massage or pull the stomach back down away from the diaphragm. Now, some people have different types of acid reflux. One of them is GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. With GERD, the acid is coming up into the throat. With heartburn, it actually burns in your throat. But what if you have what's called silent GERD? What if you have just a chronic cough without the burning? Still could be GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's sinus problems, could be GERD. So the heartburn is a symptom of GERD. Following? Acid reflux causes GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's not a disease. I don't know why they call it that. And heartburn is a symptom of that. I know it's a little confusing there. But bottom line, if you have it, you want to be careful as to what you're doing with it. So what we do is we can, you can do tests. You can do an endoscope and a doctor, you know, medical doctor can send a scope down there and take a look. And that's very diagnostic. But sometimes the stomach can just push up against the diaphragm. It's called a sliding hiatal hernia. 
And we use a technique called applied kinesiology, where we actually push against your muscles anywhere in the body and then touch you in different areas along the body. And if the muscles go weak, there then is a problem right there. And that's called applied kinesiology. And so we can go in there and fix it, whether we need to adjust the spine, we have to adjust the shoulder, fix the stomach, then go back and test it again, and we can tell if we did the job or not. So it's really cool that we know if we did it right or not, which is kind of neat. So we do that test. It takes maybe five seconds, 10 seconds to do. And we get a much better understanding as to what's going on. But chronic cough or asthma attacks can also be caused by acid reflux. I've had asthmatics that carried inhalers with them forever. And we finally fixed their stomach. Their asthma is gone. Well, the asthma isn't gone. The cause of the asthma is gone, which was the acid coming up into the throat, irritating the lungs. So once again, whenever it comes to healthcare, we want to get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. And with gastroesophageal reflux disease, heartburn, uh, it's really important you understand this because the number one reason we see patients, by far, number one reason we see patients is for pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches. My team of doctors, we have chiropractors and medical doctors, we're really good, Dr. Orr, uh, really good at treating pain. So we have pain patients come from all over the world to come see us because they know of our reputation. The number two reason we see patients is because of digestive problems. And we've got quite a reputation of treating people with digestive problems as well, and we usually get really good results because we check several things. We check the nerve supply to the digestive system or any organ, liver, spleen, kidneys, whatever it is. The, the, the brain sends messages down the spine, out the nerves to every cell in the body. So if a bone in the spine moves out of place, it can pinch the nerve that goes to your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your ovaries, your adrenal glands. So step number one, we got to open up the nerve supply. Okay, we call it pre-treating. Okay, we pre-treat the spine, get everything lined up properly. Then we can check the organs themselves and we can work on the organs directly. Then we put together a nutritional plan. And this is what we're really famous for as well, is what to eat, what not to eat, what supplements to take. Many times with acid reflux, if somebody can't get to see us, I'll have them take some Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes. And the enzymes help facilitate the digestion of food. So many times when you have acid reflux, it's not that you have too much stomach acid, although it feels like that when it burns, it's that you have too little stomach acid. And the food is sitting in the stomach for too long. The acid breaks it down and passes it on. If you don't have enough acid, you can't break it down fast enough. And so the food sits in the stomach and it rots. And when it rots, it can build up gases and it can cause a reflux reaction. Those rotten foods can also pass into your small intestine and cause abdominal gas as well. And so gas is not something you want to joke about. I mean, yeah, everybody has a little bit of gas here and there, but if you have a lot of gas and it's really foul smelling, that can be a sign that there's something seriously wrong. I mean, if I had chest pain, shooting pain down my arm, that's a symptom. What do you do? You get to the emergency room right away. If you have some of these symptoms like gas and bloating and acid reflux, that's a symptom. It may not kill you as quickly as a heart attack, but it's still something you want to fix. There's no reason not to fix it. That's the whole point. It's so easy to fix in most cases. Not every case. Sometimes you need medicine. Sometimes we need surgery. But I always say, let's start out conservative first. If you have neck pain, chiropractic care, by far the most effective, least expensive treatment for any back pain, back pain, leg pain, shoulder pain, chiropractic care. If we need to uh, elevate or escalate the treatment, we could always go to medication. We have a medical doctor on staff. We might want to consider something called PRP. PRP is we take your blood, and I was just watching uh, my nurse do it uh, before I came up to do the show. Uh, we take the blood out of the patient, we spin it down, and we extract out the platelets. Then they spin it down a second time to get all the blood out. The red blood cells just have platelets. These concentrated platelets are then injected into the joint, and there it facilitates a healing cascade. It, it feels, uh, it's anti-inflammatory. It helps with pain management, and it gets cells into that area to try to help regenerate the joint. Now, if I gave you a cortisone shot, it might get rid of your pain, but it's not going to fix anything. Now, PRP isn't going to fix everything, but it's amazing the results we see happening. And patients, again, come from all over to get the PRP shots uh, because it's so helpful. And we can do hair restoration. You can actually do PRP injections, same thing, the cells put into your hair, and in about three to six months, you'll see new hair growth in most cases. Uh, you can do erectile dysfunction. You can put fresh cells, new healing cells into the sex organs for men and women and put it into the area and start to generate new cell growth. Really exciting. Women that have leakage, bladder leakage or urinary leakage, incredible results. Again, in most cases, and when women are able to start functioning again, they can go out dancing. They don't have to wear diapers anymore. They can start dating again. Uh, let me tell you, uh, they're pretty happy with us. So if you have an issue, you want to make an appointment, go to our website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. 
You can set up an appointment right online. Every day I get questions, I'd like to set up an appointment. If you want to, you can do it right online. Right next to my picture, it says appointment. You can do it right there if you want to. Uh, you can call us. We're more than happy to set you up an appointment. We accept most insurances. If you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. You want to come see us right away. So I want, most people don't know these services even exist. So if you go to our website, drjoe.com, click on the service button. Uh, it's right on top, services. It has a list of all the services that we offer. And you can decide, you know what? I really do want to do nutritional evaluation. You know what, Dr. Joe? I really do need supplements. You know what, Dr. Joe? It may be time that I do consider PRP or hormone balancing, uh, hair restoration. So it's all there. You can decide what you want to do. Uh, we'd love to be your doctors. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. And all my doctors are trained to work on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And the reason is I have this condition. And for years, I would burp all the time. I was always bloated. I had bad breath, uh, real anxious all the time as a kid. I'm sure they would have called it ADD, but they didn't have that diagnosis back then. And it turns out it was all my gut. Because with my gut or anybody's gut, the stomach breaks proteins into amino acid. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin. Serotonin helps you focus. So if you're not able to produce the neurotransmitters, the brain can't work. And we can throw a diagnosis out at you. ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, bipolar. We can give diagnoses like that. And many times it's other things as well. I'm not saying this is the end all be all, cure all for everything. But when you fix the gut, now you're getting the body's, getting the body's natural ability to produce neurotransmitters. And you can't do that if the gut isn't working. No matter what medication you give somebody, if the gut isn't working, the brain isn't going to be working at 100%. Can't. So if we fix the gut, amazing results. In most cases, we start to see. So you may have it when you lay down at night because when you're sitting up or, gra or standing, gravity is pulling your stomach away from your diaphragm. When you bend over, when you lay down, gravity is taken out of the equation. Now the stomach can push up into the diaphragm. And that might cause acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. But it also affects neurotransmitter production, which can affect the emotions. Now, we talked a little bit about serotonin. Serotonin is used in the brain for focus. But 95% of the serotonin in your body is not used in your brain. It's used in your gut. So again, you need serotonin to make the gut work. If the gut can't work, it can't produce serotonin, which means the gut can't work. What did Elvis say? We're caught in a trap. And so you got to fix the gut in order to get the results that you're looking for. And so we see so many patients with this condition. Um, and again, sometimes it's worse at night. You lay down, you're laying down at night, you cough. Uh, many people with sleep apnea. The stomach is not, is not allowing the diaphragm to move up and down because it's pushed up against it. And you'll hear, <laughs> they'll be gasping for air at night. They'll stop breathing. Sleep apnea, in many cases, I see results uh, when we work on the stomach as well. Uh, but the nighttime esophageal reflux usually happens because you're laying down. When you're, when you're standing up, you have gravity assisting you. And that's helpful. But again, it's not treating the cause. It's treating the symptoms. Just like taking Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes. That might treat the, cause, the symptom, but not the cause. Okay? Did I say that backwards? You want to treat the cause and not the symptoms. So uh, managing at home, a couple of things you can do. Uh, eat small meals. Don't eat four or five hours before you go to bed because when you lay down, it pushes back up. Too big a meal can push the stomach up against the diaphragm. Uh, certain foods may irritate it. Tomatoes, onions, garlic, chocolate, peppermint, fatty foods, citrus fruits, oranges, grapefruits. So that might irritate it. And you just have to figure out what works for you. So what I want you to do, go to our website, drjoe.com. Under clinic, you'll see patient forms. Click on the link that says patient forms. Under there, you'll see something called a diet diary. This is free. Just print it up. I'll never know you were there. Don't worry. We don't track who goes to the website. And you can print up the diet diary and write down everything you eat. When I say everything, I want you to write down everything. If you have a soda, if you chew a piece of gum, if you suck on a mint, uh, if you have a, a candy cane, whatever it is, write it down. And then when you start to have symptoms, write in the margin what your symptoms are. Now, this works for all symptoms. It might be headaches. I can't take anything with high amounts of uh, glutamic acid, monosodium glutamate. Uh, that goes for uh, monosodium glutamate. Uh, there's over 40 different names for monosodium glutamate. Autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, natural flavors can even be monosodium glutamate. Because in the brain, if the brain is traumatized, it releases glutamic acid. And then there's a cascade effect that occurs. I am extremely sensitive to glutamic acid. And one reason is probably because of traumatic brain injuries. Uh, if somebody has a traumatic brain injury, car accident, football player, hockey player, that can then release 
uh, these chemicals into the body. Now, I haven't played football in decades, but I'm very susceptible to glutamic acid. So write down everything you eat and then write down your symptoms. I have acid reflux. I have gas. I have bloating. I have headaches. I have anxiety. I get moody. Write it all down. You're probably going to find a connection between what you're eating and what the problem is. And then you can avoid those foods, but then you still want to come see us so we can see if we can get to the cause of the problem. If you can get back to eating a normal diet, that's my goal. Some people can't. Some people are highly allergic to peanuts. Genetics. Some people, uh, well, everyone doesn't do well with milk. I don't know anyone who does well with milk. They might do better than others, but milk, we don't have the proteins to break it down. So if we don't have renin to break down casein, we don't have lactase to break down lactose. These are all proteins and sugars that are found in milk. So that's why in many cases I'll tell people, give up the milk, give up the wheat. If there's two things I want you to give up with anything is wheat and dairy products. Give those up. I say, do it for two weeks. See how you feel. Chances are you're going to be really happy and you're going to say, Dr. Joe, you're a genius. And I'm not, by the way. I'm three points below genius, just so you know. But you'll say, Dr. Joe, you're a genius. How did you come up with that? Because nobody does well with wheat and dairy products. Some people do better than others, but nobody really does well. So you got to be careful with that. And it's funny because a lot of the, the, the recommendations I'll see, you know, raise your headboard up so that you don't have the acid reflux. That treats the symptom, not the cause. Wear loose fitting clothes. Treats the symptom, not the cause. If you're pregnant, this baby can push the stomach up into the diaphragm and we can work on your stomach even if you're pregnant. So if you're pregnant, you're more than welcome to come see us. In fact, when I become Grand Poobah of the universe in healthcare, the health czar, I believe that I'm going to make it mandatory that all pregnant women get chiropractic care because you got to put those bones back in place because the baby's pushing things out of place and that can pinch nerves, nerves control organs. So if the baby pushes the nerves in the low back out of place and pinches the nerve that goes to the baby, now we've got a problem. So with chiropractic care, people always think of pain. So neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, absolutely. My team of doctors are really good at that. We've been doing it. I have to figure out how many years combined. We've probably got 150, 200 years combined between all of us. Uh, but we'd love to see you. And like I said, we accept most insurances, car accidents. We even accept Medicare. I get that question just about every day on the website. Do you take Medicare? Yes, we take Medicare. A health savings account, a flexible spending accounts. In fact, some of them you may have to use before the end of the year. We'd love to have you come in. Uh, Supplement-wise, the minimum supplements I believe everybody should be taking are Super Greens and Essential Source. They're two powders. They're on the website, drjoe.com. I can't imagine anyone not taking it. Now, there are certain exceptions you read on the website. If you have acid reflux, every time you eat a cooked meal, I'd recommend you take a digestive enzyme. I take a digestive enzyme just because I'm not 16 anymore. Every time I eat a cooked meal, I take a digestive enzyme. It's amazing how much better you feel, less gas you'll have, uh, less bloating. It's crazy how good it is, and it's such a simple little fix. And especially in the wintertime, especially if you're at risk of getting a disease like everyone, I do recommend you take vitamin D. Now, we can test your vitamin D at our office if you want to, but as a prophylactic measure, I recommend everybody take about 5,000 international units a day. 5,000 international units is five drops of Dr. Joe's vitamin D3. When you take D3, make sure it has K2 in it because if you're taking vitamin D, it'll help you absorb calcium, but if you don't have K2, K2 tells the calcium where to go. Go into the bones, stay away from the blood vessels, stay away from the organs, stay away from the joints. If you don't have the K2, taking D3 might actually be detrimental. So D3 with K2, I take five drops a day for if you're like, you know, a, a, a child on, a baby, you might do a little less. Uh, getting it tested is the ultimate thing you want to do. But again, not everybody wants to get their vitamin D tested. Just take 5,000 drops a day. 5,000 international units a day, that's five drops. Don't take 5,000 drops. Gary will yell at me. Plus, got to take a break. If you have any questions, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We have over 1,500 hours of podcasts there. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We post every single day at Dr. Joe Esposito. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could be with us today. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you stayed with us, thanks for staying. I always appreciate that when you guys hang out a little bit with me. First part of the show, we talked about uh, digestive issues, and this show is on the website, drjoe.com. You could just listen to the show there. Now we're going to talk about heart conditions. And the reason I put these two together is because many times people have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas bloating. They say, Dr. Joe, I think I'm having a heart attack. They go to the emergency room or they go to the cardiologist. They do the stress test. They say, you know what? Your heart looks great. Yeah, but I'm still having chest pain. Well, we don't know what it is. So many times it's a problem with the digestive system causing chest pain. Now you can have chest pain, think it's your digestive system. It's not. 
It's your heart. So I want you to, we're going to talk about some uh, differentiating, differentiating factors between digestion and heart and what to do about each one of them. We kind of covered digestion already. I may bounce back and forth for that one as well. But especially now, holiday stress, not being able to travel. This is the first year of my life I won't be with my mother for Christmas. Uh, We've got COVID. We've got lack of sunlight. The sunlight uh, interacts with cholesterol. UVB rays interact with cholesterol to create vitamin D. Vitamin D is the magical, mystical vitamin. It's the cheapest of insurance policy you'll ever buy, and it's amazing. And so many people are deficient in vitamin D. One of the reasons, especially in the winter, is you can't get vitamin D from the sun, even if you're out sun all day. Had a patient call me yesterday and said, Dr. Joe, I got sunburn on my face from skiing. Well, yeah, you're going to get windburn as well, and you'll get sunburn too, but it's not the UVB rays that we need uh, to interact with the cholesterol to create the, the vitamin D. It's UVA rays. So anyway, I'm not going to go into all that today. But uh, lack of sunlight, bad diet, all of these increase your risk of heart disease. Now, bad diet, especially around holiday times, because what are people doing? They're eating bad food. And at the, you know, we, we live stream these shows, by the way. So if, you, if you're listening on radio right now, I want you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Dr. Joe Esposito and YouTube at Dr. Joe Esposito is my handle. And we post every single day, we post something and we live stream a lot of the shows. So at the break, uh, we, we were taking some questions and people uh, asked some really good questions. And we talked about heart disease and we talked about digestive issues and what to do about them. But you definitely want to tune in and, and, uh, because we, we cover so many things that if you have a question, somebody else has a question as well. And I see that all the time. People have questions and they say, well, it's, I have a unique question. No, you don't. Everybody's got similar questions. So all these things can raise your risk of heart disease. And we were talking about uh, bad diets because especially around special occasions, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, 4th of July, birthdays, we eat foods we normally wouldn't eat. And we call it celebrating. I got to come up with a word that sounds like celebrating, but it's poison, suicidabrating or something like that, because you're putting so many toxins in your body. A, you put too much food in your body, and that can cause chest pain. Many times it's a stomach pushing up against the diaphragm. You think it's a heart attack. So it's too much food. It's different foods, foods you're not used to eating, pumpkin pie, turkey, um, I don't know, let's say hot dogs on 4th of July, but foods you're just not used to eating. Uh, drinking alcohol, of course, is really it increases your risk of heart disease as well. So you're putting yourself in a stressful situation and you're eating too much food and you're eating the wrong kinds of foods and you're eating too many foods combined. Your stomach is designed to break down proteins into amino acids. It's not designed, although it helps a little bit, breaking down fats and carbohydrates. So if I throw a s- steak or a p- turkey into my stomach, it's going to take about four to six hours to break down and pass from my stomach into my small intestine. Then I throw some pumpkin pie on top. Pumpkin pie or fruits may break down a half hour, 45 minutes. Now the sugar is sitting in your stomach for six hours, longer than it's supposed to, in a hot acid environment. It can start to ferment. And that's why a lot of people get such bad gas when you combine the foods. So a mono meal is the perfect meal. If I just have Brussels sprouts, if I just have turkey, which of course I wouldn't do, um, that's going to be the ideal situation. But when you start putting turkey and cranberry sauce and stuffing and green beans and then pumpkin pie and then ice cream and then coffee and, and, and all these foods mixed together, the stomach doesn't know what to do. Do I just digest proteins or just fats or digest carbohydrates? I don't know what to do. And then the food sits in the stomach and rots. So this is one of the reasons I feel that we start to see spikes in diseases right after holidays, uh, because we're eating too much food, we're eating a lot of sugar, weakened immune system, stress of traveling. Now we have extra stress, of course, uh, in the situation we're in now, and that can increase your risk of heart attack. So when blood can't get to the heart, the heart muscles can't get the oxygen it needs, and without oxygen, the cells are either damaged or they die. It's pretty simple. That's what a heart attack is. The key to recovery is getting blood flow restored as quickly as possible. So if you have shooting pain in your chest and it shoots down your left arm and it goes up into your jaw and you start feeling dizzy and nauseous, get yourself to the emergency room. The quicker we get to a heart attack, the higher the rate of survival. And this is not a chiropractic case. This is not a, I'm going to take some Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support and be cured. If you're having a heart attack, you need medical help now. So what happens is over time, cholesterol and fatty materials build up on the walls inside the blood vessels that take the blood to your heart. These are called arteries. 
This makes it harder for the blood to flow freely because there's clogged up. Now, we've all been in the shower, and all of a sudden, we're giving our ankles a bath. Why? The drain is clogged up. Well, the drain is going to drain, but it's draining a lot slower. That's what clogged arteries are like. You get this clogging of the, of the blood vessels, and the blood just can't flow through it like it's supposed to. If a piece of this plaque breaks off, this clot can, form, uh, can block up arteries further upstream. So you might have a big blood vessel that has plaque around it. Blood's flowing through it, but not well. A piece of this breaks off. Now, the consistency of this plaque is like toothpaste. You're not talking like, you know, cement. But a piece of this breaks off, and it travels through bigger vessels to smaller vessels to smaller vessels, and it clogs one up. So it's ever on the other end of that clog is not getting the proper blood supply. If it happens in your heart, it could be a heart attack. If it happens in your brain, it could be a stroke. But you also can cut off blood, blood supply to other organs as well. So the organs may be working, but they're not working at 100%. That's where the problems come in. So symptoms, you may feel pain, pressure, discomfort in your chest, become short of breath, start to sweat, faint, uh, feel sick to your stomach, neck pain, jaw pain, shoulders may hurt, all symptoms of a possible heart attack. Now, as a chiropractor and board certified in orthopedics and board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, we get a lot of patients from all over the world come in with all sorts of symptoms. Many times, if you have neck pain or shoulder pain or radiating pain, it's a pinched nerve. So I've had a lot of people over the years come in. I went to the doctor, went to the cardiologist, got checked, which is the right thing to do. Absolutely. Wasn't that. What do I do now? All right, come see us. We give them chiropractic care. We fix their stomach. Uh, we get them on good diet. We get, get, open up the nerve and blood supply. And in most cases, they do better. So if you're having these symptoms, it never hurts to err on the side of caution. When caution says, okay, it wasn't a heart attack then you want to come see us. Now, if it's just a neck pain or a shoulder pain, you don't have the dizziness and the stress and the fatigue and the anxiety, and chances are just come see us to begin with. Men are more likely to break out in cold sweat and feel pain uh, move down their left arm. Uh, women, more likely to have uh, back pain or neck pain, heartburn, shortness of breath. Uh, they tend to have stomach trouble, which we covered in the first half of the show, including feeling queasy and throwing up. They may also feel tired, lightheaded, and dizzy. A couple of weeks before a heart attack, women might have flu-like symptoms and sleep problems. So you got to think, okay, three weeks ago, I felt like I had the flu, but I didn't. I had trouble sleeping. Now I'm having anxiety and I'm having heartburn. I'm having shortness of breath. For women, the symptoms might be a little different than men. There's about 435 women in the United States have a heart attack every year and symptoms can be mild and sometimes they just dismissed. So again, you may have a heart attack and not even know it. And I've seen that happen. Patients come in, they get their tests from their cardiologist and they say, doctor said I had a heart attack years ago. We see scar tissue in the heart, okay? We don't get to take blood work, too, and test that as well because when heart muscles start to die, uh, certain chemicals are released into the blood. And when we can see that. We can see what's going on there as well. So if you know someone having a heart attack, get them to the doctor right away. Now, when I studied first aid and CPR, it was compression, compressions, compressions, and then breaths. You'd hold their nose and blow into their mouth. Well, that was kind of gross. But aside from that, I don't want to kiss anybody. I don't know. But aside from that, it turns out you don't need the breaths. You have oxygen in your heart, in your blood. You just got to get the blood pumping. So now what the new recommendations are for CPR is you get on their chest and you, you know, do compressions on their chest to uh, the, the tune of staying alive. Uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. That's how fast you got to be doing it. So sing staying alive in your head by the Bee Gees and you do the compressions. Even if you don't know what you're doing, do it. Because doing something is better than doing nothing. So do the compressions on the chest. Um, it's a good idea to take a class on first aid because you don't want to push too hard and break a rib. But even if you break a rib, if you start the heart, I'd rather have a broken rib than dead. So doing something is better than doing nothing. Again, the breaths are no longer needed or necessary according to the new rules. So we can diagnose it. We can do an EKG on the heart's activity. Uh, we can diagnose it through blood tests. Certain proteins are released when the heart muscles start to die. Now, doctors will try to move quickly to increase blood flow. The best thing you can do for blood flow is not clog up your arteries. It's very simple. And arteries get clogged, veins don't. The best thing you can do is unclog your arteries and you do that by eating a good diet. Every day, uh, we see patients, we take x-rays. Every day, I promise you, we're gonna see one of our patients in one of our offices is gonna have plaque in the arteries. Sometimes it's called phleboliths. Flebolites, we can see flebolites, a calcification in the pelvic area. Uh, we take a side view of the low back area on an x-ray, and we can see the abdominal aorta or the common iliac arteries just coated with plaque. And I always think, how is this person even alive? 
how much plaque that, and if you have it in your pelvis, you have it in your heart and your brain as well. It's not like it only goes to one place. And it blows my mind. But here's the thing. I then sit down with the patient, or my doctors do, and we give them advice on what to do dietary-wise. And we get them on supplements. We get them off the animal proteins and the, the saturated fats. We get them on a good plant-based diet, a lot of fiber. And if they do what we say, I can't say always because I, I, I haven't seen every patient in the world, but every patient I've ever seen that actually did what we say, we usually can see an improvement in the hardening of the arteries. It's amazing. And they may go back to their doctor, get some blood work done, or you know, get some other tests done. They say, you know, Bob, whatever you're doing, you're doing great. It's, it's getting better. And then they usually say, well, I went to Dr. Joe's office, and Dr. Joe's doctors told me what to do. And usually doctors say, oh, if Dr. Joe said it, just do it. He's the man. So, which I'm always flattered by. But it's really nice that the, the health profession gets it. You know, again, doc, medical doctors are not trained in nutrition. They may do postgraduate studies in nutrition. They're not trained in nutrition. I'm not trained in surgery. I can't draw blood from you. Nurses can, but I can't. I got six degrees, seven degrees. I can't draw blood, but they can. So everybody has their specialty. So I'm not saying the doctor's wrong. I'm just saying that that's not their strong point. They have strong points that I refer to them. They have, I, we have strong points that they refer to us. And so getting the diet straightened out is so key. And sometimes it just takes looking at that x-ray and saying, oh my gosh, there it is. Because with blood work is one thing. Blood work, people look at a piece of paper and says, oh, I got high triglycerides. Oh, I got high LDLs, whatever, my cholesterol. I see it on a piece of paper and eh, it's no big deal. When I show you a picture of you, this is you, these are your arteries, they're clogged up. They go, oh, wow, now I get it. Holy cow, that's real. But if the doctors say you got heart in the arteries, believe them. I don't know any doctor in the world's going to lie to you about something like that. So if they say it, just do it. Get on a protocol. Get on a plant-based diet. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. There's so much research. Dr. McDougall has done a ton of research. He's a medical doctor. And he's done tons of research on reversing heart disease. Up to McDougall's research, it was pretty much standard that you could not reverse heart disease under any circumstances. Dr. McDougall came out with his research and Esselstein as well and said, okay, here's the proof that if you change your diet, you can reverse most cases of heart disease. Why wouldn't you do that? It drives me insane when I hear that. Well, Dr. Joe, I have heart disease, nothing I can do about it. No, that's not true. I was told I have macular degeneration. I believed my doctor. I saw the pictures. And he said, there's nothing you can do about it. I proved him wrong. My macular degeneration is getting better and better every year I go. And I, I said at the break, because again, we live stream these shows. I said at the break, I said, um, I need new glasses. The glasses I have on right now are too strong for me. My vision is getting better as I'm getting older. So again, I still wear glasses. I probably will. Hopefully, I won't ever there'll come a time when I don't need them. But... I want you to understand that a lot of things uh, can be helped through a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and a good diet. So if you have acid reflux, we talked about that in the first half of the show, the main nerve that controls your digestive system is called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. If the vagus nerve is irritated, it can cause heart palpitations. And I know this because I had that for years. I would lay in bed at night as a kid with the earliest memories I have of living in Hoboken, New Jersey, laying in my bed and my heart would just race like crazy and then stop and then race again and then stop. And I kept thinking, I guess that's normal. I didn't die, so I guess it's normal. And it turns out I had acid reflux. My stomach, well, GER, gastrointestinal reflux disease. My stomach was pushed up against my diaphragm, irritating my vagus nerve that caused my heart to beat fast. Once I was a doctor and years into practice, maybe 10, 15 years into practice, I finally figured out how to fix this. I don't have that anymore. My heart's quiet and steady. And people listen to my heart when I go give blood. If I get a medical evaluation, they're like, wow, your heart's really strong and really slow. That's awesome. How old are you? And I tell them, like, wow, you got the heart of somebody half your age. Well, good. I want to be around a lot longer than everybody else. I always said, I got to start making younger friends. You know, if my friends aren't going to play along here, I got to make younger friends. So there are a lot of things you can do to help prevent heart disease. And we know this. The research is clear as day. There's the doctor's, uh, the, the, the nurse's study, I'm sorry, out of, uh, I think it's out of Boston. Uh, you've got Esselstyn's work. You've got McDougall's work. You've got uh, Sinatra's work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many medical professionals are saying, yes, this is easily reversed when you eat a good diet. Now, I'm not saying don't take your medication. I'm not saying don't follow your medical doctor's advice. But what puts you at risk? If you smoke, history of heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, all the things I just named are also comorbidities for things like COVID. So all these things that you may have are increasing your risk of not only heart disease, but of every other disease, comorbidities. Now, lack of exercise and depression can also lead to heart issues too, 
But here's the thing. When it comes to weight loss, when it comes to health, yes, you should keep your body in motion. Absolutely, I agree with that 100%. 80 to 85% of your health, my opinion, is from your diet. 15 to 20% is from exercise. Now, I'm not saying don't exercise, but you have to take control of your diet. No one, as far as I know in your life, is forcing you to eat. You make those decisions. And so you decide what to put in your mouth and you'll be pretty happy with the results. So again, if you, st- if you smoke, stop smoking. If you have diabetes, go to our website, drjoe.com, listen to the show we did on diabetes. Just type diabetes in the, re- in, the, in the bar, in the search bar. If you have high cholesterol, listen to the show we did on high cholesterol. This, the website is a, is a plethora of knowledge. I remember Herman, Herman Cain, unfortunately, passed away. Uh, I remember talking to him one day. He said, Dr. Joe Esposito. He says, you are a plethora of medical knowledge. He said, I would love to sit with you and pick your brain one day. I said, Herman, I'm, I'm here for you. I'd be more than happy to help you. And unfortunately, he passed away before we could meet. But there's so much information on that website that a lot of colleges, schools, even use the, our shows as, cl- as teaching aids. A lot of students call me up and say, Dr. Joe, you said on such and such. And I said, are you a patient? No. You listen to us on the radio? No. Television? No. How do you know who we are? Oh, my teacher uh, plays your shows in class. So it's a lot of great information that we have that's really easy, no pun intended, to digest. So if you have neck pain and back pain and chest pain and shoulder pain, if it's urgent, if you feel anxiety and and, uh, anxious, you definitely want to get it checked out uh, medically. But if you have these issues, why don't you come see us? It's probably something basic. The number one treatment for back pain is chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. If you have back pain, I cannot comprehend for the life of me why you wouldn't be getting a chiropractic evaluation first. Most effective, least expensive treatment. I don't know how else I can get it to you unless I went to your house. So if you want to make an appointment, Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E dot com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. In a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. So there's no excuse why if you're in a car accident, even if it's your fault, get in to see us as soon as humanly possible. Because the longer you wait, the insurance companies may start to jerk you around too. Oh, you you weren't hurt. You didn't go to the doctor. You have up to six months for those symptoms to appear. Most insurance companies will give you two weeks before they start giving you a hard time. Six months before symptoms appear. Come see us. Nothing wrong. We'll send you home. So you really need to come see us right away. So if you have a problem, stop suffering needlessly. And good news is, uh, this we just found this out a couple weeks ago, if you're seeing a VA doctor, Veterans Administration, if that doctor refers you to us, the VA, they're telling us, are going to pay your bills. So if you have a VA doctor that can refer you to us, from what I hear, I haven't seen it in, in happen yet, you can come see us. And again, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. The initial visit used to be 375 And that was for an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, and then on a second visit, going over the x-rays and doing a nutrition evaluation, not a second adjustment. If you need more treatment, which chances are you will, my staff will discuss with you insurance coverage and cash policies and Medicare and everything else. So we used to have 375. We've reduced it to 199. It's not going to last forever every week. How long is that going to last? I don't know. We're going to raise it up soon because we we don't want to go broke either. I got to have enough enough money to pay the bills so we can see you guys as patients. So so if you want to make an appointment, I'd recommend you do it right now. Um, End of year, you may have uh, health savings accounts or flexible spending accounts. I know one of them you have to use by the end of the year. Come use it. Otherwise, it's wasted. So I hate to see people suffer. And when they finally come to us, they say, why didn't I do this sooner, Dr. Joe? I don't know why I suffered so long. And the answer is, I don't know. I have no idea why you're not doing that. But I also want you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube uh, at Dr. Joe Esposito uh, because we post every day. We have uh, fun groups. We have a group called the Joe It Alls on Facebook. You're more than welcome to join it. Uh, the Joe It Alls is kind of like a private group that we have, and we have a lot of good times in there. Um, we have uh, specials, giveaways. We always post more live streaming. Uh, we used to do live lectures. Unfortunately, we're not doing that right now. Uh, but if you really are serious about wanting to get well and stay well, I strongly advise uh, you follow us Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and then join the Joe It Alls. Again, it's Facebook, Joe hyphen it hyphen alls, and uh, we'd love to have you along. Um, other things that can affect your heart, of course, diet. We talked about that. Acid reflux, vagus nerve, pinch nerves. I have a lot of patients with blood pressure issues, and there's a lot of studies out that show with chiropractic care, adjusting the atlas, the top bone of the neck, may help blood pressure in some cases. It's not going to help everybody. The lower part of the neck, that's the nerve supply to the heart and lungs. So many times I'll have patients with a you know lower neck pain, shoulder pain. We adjust that area, blood pressure drops. And even with the acid reflux, 
I have countless patients over the years. When we fix their stomach and fix their digestive system, it takes the stress off the vagus nerve, which takes the stress off the heart, and then the blood pressure normalizes. Because I don't know anybody who wants to take medication, even addicts. You know, the opioid crisis is out of control. Doctors can't prescribe like they used to. They're being monitored, so they can lose their license if they prescribe too much. One of the big concerns now, if people are taking opioids, is if they can't get opioids, they may turn to heroin. I have a friend of mine, he's a dentist, he's a middle-aged guy, you know, upper middle class, very nice guy. And we were talking one day and he says, I wish my wife had met you. And I thought, oh, that's very nice. It would have been nice to meet his wife. He said, no, 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 no. He said, you don't understand. She hurt her back and she didn't go to a chiropractor and she got hooked on the opioids and then they stopped prescribing it. She turned to heroin and she, she died. She died on the streets. And this is a man who has, you know, financial wherewithal to take care of things, but you couldn't even get the medications. So with the opioid crisis, all the medical studies coming out, the government studies are saying, we want you to try alternative or uh, uh, health care, which I always laugh at that name, chiropractic care, uh, massage, nutrition. So the government is even saying, folks, if you have pain, start out simple. Don't jump right to the end game. And after surgery, I'm not against surgery, believe me, some of my best doctors I work with are surgeons. Once I cut you, you're cut forever. You will develop scar tissue. Now, sometimes the surgery is very successful, but scar tissue forms and makes it worse. And blacks are more likely to have scar tissue than whites. So the less we can cut into you, the less medication we give you, the better off I feel you're going to be. And that's why from a supplement standpoint, if you are taking medication, I recommend you take something called glutathione. Glutathione is wonderful to help the liver function normally. I take it every day as part of my immune protocol. The minimum supplements I believe everybody should be taking are super greens and essential source, uh, glutathione, vitamin D. That's the minimum supplements for immune. Now, the doctor I work with uh, at our Marietta office, he works in other offices. And he said to me the other day, so I got to give you a compliment. And I said, what's that, Bob? He says, I work in other offices and I see other patients. He says, and I do a lot of blood work on our patients. Every other clinic I go to, people are skyrocketed, cholesterol, low-density lipoproteins, triglycerides, uh, their immune system is out of whack. He says, your patients are probably about 80% healthier, 90% healthier than everybody else I see. He says, so your supplements are amazing. He said, I just want to give you some kudos for that. I said, thank you. So if you want to order supplements, it's available on the website, drjoe.com, or you can pick them up at our offices, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Save you some shipping costs. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, and I think you should, drjoe.com. You can book it right online. It says right there on the front page, appointments. Click on that. You can book it yourself. Call us if you have questions. Uh, web, phone number is everywhere. Uh, if you have a question, you can send it to us through the website, drjoe.com. Uh, it pops up. There's a little thing that says, hi, I want to chat. And we're more than happy to talk with you. Uh, and we live stream our shows again. So I want you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube because then you can see, uh, see my pretty face, uh, but you can see the live streams as well. And we have over 1,500 hours of podcasts on the website. Any podcast service you have, my podcast is called For the Health of It or Dr. Joe Esposito. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. We'll catch you next time.